So we have gold at 4.5 and we also used to have or well we actually still have red dot engine and we also have blasphemy engine. All this started something like one year ago when there were some uh, eggs or Twitter posts about the gold at CM or community manager that some people did not like among uh, other problems that there were and, and I believe already uh, that that are still among us um, unfortunately so some people decided to create Red Dot and then also Blasting was created because there were some developers from Red Dot who then there were some problems and then they decided to create Blasting so which is the current situation with them because we haven't really at least f in my opinion been hearing a lot about this controversy and about these engines for a very long time so in this video i wanted to check out the current situation of the three so to begin with this go to 4.5 was released just a couple of weeks ago it really introduces a lot of interesting things a lot of um improvements in general okay not only this but also just like maybe two weeks after releasing this or even way less uh let's actually check it was 15 september this is 2 october yes 15 no this one actually want to check 30 september so yeah this is 15 days after we got 4.5 4.6 dev one okay we actually had uh, some um interesting features uh, over here so once again pretty interesting the pace that godot is having with the releases now on its own a uh, red dot a uh, actually ha had its first year uh, anniversary okay and let's actually check the post that they have been doing once again i'm just gonna base things in what i can find easily here in the web page maybe they have more things that they are working on on their discord server or in other um in other areas okay but i just want to check out what is available over here right now so this is the last post from 30 september literally just a couple of days ago red Dot's first year anniversary okay uh with this banner over here pretty interesting and what we have here is that okay red Dot 4.4 better release red Dot 4.4 this is pretty interesting uh 4.4 and go Dot has just started 4.6 so this is a little bit kind of an old version okay uh finally it gets a better release that you can download here and this is a beta release okay so it's not even an official version okay um and you really see they say here going forward we're looking to pick up the pace with red Dot releases so they don't lag too far behind coded now uh the things that they have now like two engines let's say here we have red dot which is like the stable release or, or yeah we could call it maybe the, the stable release but then they have drex engine pretty interesting logo by the way um which was announced in the may update okay so a couple of uh, months ago um and as you can see it's a hard fork of godot 4.5 so this is this does have the latest features okay and the idea of this is that this allows uh, developers much more freedom to change the engine code and add features that wouldn't be compatible with Red Dot. And for example, here they say in the four months since Rex was announced, we've already seen some significant performance boost compared to Godot. Okay, so that's pretty interesting. And not only does it has this, but also it has some additions. So it has a 3D terrain editor which was usually done using an external plugin okay but they have now integrated it uh natively inside of the engine um but in reality i, I believe as far as i understand that what they have done is basically integrating natively uh, this plugin okay which is an add-on from well not the asset store but i believe it should be uh no it's not even go to the asset store but it's basically a, an open source uh plugin and they have basically integrated it by default so uh, I believe that they have not kind of maybe they have optimized it a little bit, make it work a little bit better, but it's just integrating an add-on, okay? So you could also use this in Godot if you wanted to. Okay, just a side note there. Uh they also been working a lot in uh, their own visual scripting system. They do have a Revlox add-on, okay, for Red Dot specifically. I don't know if this would uh, actually work in Godot, for example. Uh, but it's actually pretty similar from what I'm seeing over here. I uh, to another plugin that i've seen uh block code block coding plugin so it's a fork of this once and they are forking uh, some plugins. so i don't think this is either good or bad i'm not gonna actually give my opinion on these things i just want to expose them um I'm not saying they are just um they wanted an integrated visual scripting system for Rex that would be far less limiting what it can do just like train 3d will put in another orchestrator into Rex, which is another add-on okay uh so pretty interesting they are kind of integrating natively maybe tools that for some developers should be by default in the engine um so once again pretty interesting features okay um so 
that is what we have until now okay uh, about reddit at the moment of recording this video uh then the other the previous post is red 4.4 alpha 3 uh 7 august so something like one month close to two months uh before this uh post over here 24 june 11 june so once again there are updates okay and frankly uh, for them to have uh, let's say so few uh, developers compared to what god has and and so little money and budget compared to what god has once again it's interesting the the work that they have been doing and and the fact that the community itself is uh, still there releasing stuff okay of course we cannot compare the pace that Godot can have compared to the pace that red dot or any other fork can have it, it's something that it's gonna be completely um completely different and also of course if i believe they also know this if you are the type of people um that does not care about the controversy if you are the type of people that just want to develop games okay uh make money out of them work for clients work for a company or whatever it is of course you're gonna just be using goaded i don't think their target audience of these forks is kind of stealing developers of goaded that have been using for three years or more or even literally less because they know that keeping the pace with Godot, okay, keeping it updated, up to date with everything that, that involves, I don't think that is their target audience. Just for you to understand whether you should use Godot, Red Dot, or any other fork. Of course, if you just want the latest version with the most amount of features with the better pace, of course, the forks, unfortunately, don't have the resources to deal with that. And in those cases, you have to use Godot, okay? But I'm saying if you want more maybe a closer community okay uh, maybe that a feeling that you are being heard way more okay and that you can contribute to a project way more and maybe also you don't like how god has been managed okay itself once again this is an interesting um an interesting um version okay that you can use also okay uh so this was all for red ones and there could be more things on discord in other in other uh, places but i just wanted to point out what was at least from my uh, from what i can see here the most important things okay then we have blasium over here um so over here we have the blog also once again they may have more things in other places um so it seems that also uh, the latest version, okay, is up to date with Godot until 4.4.1 in this case. Uh, so once again, it, these forks have not yet been updated to 4.5. So that's something pretty also important for you. These forks actually take some some days, even some weeks, even they could take, I know, some months in order to keep up to date with the latest Godot features. So, so once again, if you are creating your own games, if you are working for your own clients, if you are working for a company, whatever it is, uh, so once again, uh, probably you do want to have access as soon as possible to the newest features. So that's something that these folks cannot all the time provide and it's completely understandable. Once again, the target audience, I believe, is quite different. Uh, so if you actually want to download it, or actually I didn't want to download it, that was my bad. Uh, I just wanted to go to a blog. It's next to it. Um, so here we have, uh, they, they used to have here like much, m many more blog posts. I think they, I don't really know what happened. Maybe it's in other place or I don't really know because they had pretty interesting things going on here. Um, but anyway, so for example, on May 3rd, okay, uh, we got this up-to-date uh, update with the code 4.4.1, for example. And uh, well, they implemented some stuff over here, here in terms of shader, uh, other bug fixes, improvements in general. Once again, th this, these are not things super major or super big as we have in Godot, once again, nothing that we can compare, uh, but just for you to once again understand that. And then uh, the other post I have is in September 4th, so let's say pretty recently, a new color button node. Um, so this is pretty interesting. The color button node is a lightweight control with the color property. It displays a single color and triggers user-defined actions when pressed. This makes it particularly useful for creating color palette selector or custom UI elements. So indeed, that's pretty interesting. So yes, this is basically for whenever you want to create a color palette, like you, you give your player the chance to customize its appearance using colors for these specific, very specific things. It could be useful, even though it can be made kind of manually. But once again, pretty interesting that these tools uh, are being uh, added, okay, for people that may not have that, that much experience or they, or maybe we just want to uh, streamline our workflow a little bit. Once again, all these tools really help that out. 
Uh, then uh, they they also been working a lot in integrating games in in other platforms. Like that is also that Blasim has also been doing a lot. Uh, unfortunately, I can't see the previous blog posts over here. I don't know why, but they had way more. Uh, so I know here they have um, a support for publishing games as Discord embedded apps. Uh, so now you can also kind of play your games on Discord. Once again, this is actually pretty interesting and pretty disruptive. Let's say once again. What actual application does this have in reality? Like there isn't many, let's say many opportunities with Discord games or anything like that. Once again, if you just want to do it because you want to, or you want to play these games directly on Discord, okay, that's perfect. Okay, if that's the target, okay. Uh, but once again, for many other people, this may not be actually pretty uh, interesting if, once again, they just want to work for a client, for their own projects, or whatever it is. Uh, and then, for example, also had the, uh, it allows you to deploy games directly on uh, YouTube, so that is pretty interesting. Uh, so for YouTube playables web games, okay? So these YouTube playables, okay, we actually have the, the post here about what they are. Uh, I think this is not currently very popular, I haven't really heard of this before. But basically are interactive games and experiences published to YouTube. And of course are still in early access stages with limited access to specific regions. So that's why we maybe haven't heard a lot about it. But once again, they're exploring other markets, okay? Or, or I mean, not other markets, but exploring people that want to experience and, and take a look at other markets besides the usual markets, you know, the mobile stores, the Steam store, uh, consoles, whatever it is. Um, so once again, pretty interesting, okay? Um, Something that I also really like here, um, and one of the main reasons why I think that people uh, are kind of maybe using these forks or taking a look at them, is how they feel way more connected to the main developers, to the main team, and how they feel that their suggestions are being heard a little bit more. So for example, here in Reddit, they have this proposal page where you have these different proposals and people can, can vote, okay, depending on, oh yes, this is interesting, this is not interesting, whatever it is. Um, and maybe in, in Godot itself, it would not be possible because there would be thousands of of proposals here where they're here, even though there are uh, many, they are not thousands. So they can be addressed individually by the team way better. Uh, in Blastroom, I believe that you also have something similar if you send them a message or in their own Discord server. So that's something uh, very interesting. Okay, and for example, here they also have games here that haven't created with the engine itself, for example, Project Handman. Also, uh, they've, uh, I believe this project integrates, um, it's a multiplayer hand game. Um, and what they have is a built-in multiplayer lobby system, for example, so that is once again pretty interesting. That, that was actually explained in a blog post, but I don't know what happened to those blog posts, to be honest. Uh, so that's pretty interesting, so if you are super interested in multiplayer games that are usually a little bit complicated, well, Blastion does provide some tools that can help you a little bit, okay? Uh, so that's pretty interesting even this, <laughs> that you can even add them, add this game and play it on Discord, that's sick. Um, so that's all, actually if we, let's take a look at if we have tools here, well, you have like, once again, I believe that these tools are pretty interesting for those who understand what they are. Um, for example, here in Blastom Services, here you have all the thing about multiplayer, so we have Lobby, Scripted Lobby, Login, Master Server, well, once again, lots of information. Once again, this is a super targeted to maybe more advanced developers or for developers that create multiplayer games. So if you are really into that, you can definitely check that out. Or if you're interested in any of these things, you can also check them out. Uh, so to actually come to a conclusion about all this, I know it's like a lot of information. Sorry, this was from a previous video. So once again, here the question is, okay, uh, should I use Godot? Should I use Redot? Should I use Blasium? Should I actually use Unity, Unreal? And that's the question that a lot of people tend to ask me or tend to ask themselves. And the true answer to all of this is this magic word that is called depends. Okay? So, once again, this can be a whole video on its own, but once again, if what you want is uh, basically, for example, a access... Sorry, yeah, latest features, latest features, constant updates, uh, and you don't care about the controversy, then of course use Godot, okay? That, that's gonna be the most interesting option. If you are in super interested in mold, 
multiplayer games, for example, uh, creating lobbies, all that, and you don't really care about these things that I mentioned, like latest features, content updates, and you do care about the controversy, then maybe Blasium could be a good alternative, okay? And then, like, the middle option between these two, I believe, would actually be Redos, which would be, like, here. Like, in the middle of them would be this one. In reality, neither Redot nor Blasium have that amazing pace that Gold has with Abed. Once again, 100% understandable. Uh, but, well, I feel, personally, that Blasium is kind of targeted to even more advanced people than than what Redot is trying to do. Uh, but that is my, my main take. Actually, I could simplify this even more, okay, in this other sentence so latest updates and features and also the controversy so if you do care about the last updates and features of course go with godot okay if you don't care about the controversy okay in most cases you directly go go with godot now let's say that you don't care about Godot updates and features, then yes, maybe exploring the other alternatives could be worth it. Let's say that you do care about all that controversy. Yes, exploring all those options could be interesting as well. So that was my my, uh, my video that I wanted to create, just updating you on what has been happening with the two forks and Godot itself. Um, so that's basically all that I wanted to mention. If you liked it, please subscribe to the channel and see you in the next one. Bye bye.